Kappa, kappa, kappa. It's been about two months now this, since this thing took effect here on YouTube. And I'm talking with you about like, where are we at since then? The thing a lot of creators were concerned about was getting their channel to monetize, the AI miscategorizing them and people losing all their money and their revenue and their traffic plummeting. And it was definitely sped out to be the doomsday of everything for YouTube creators. Well, let's look at the data and see what that suggests about where we're at today. Hey guys, my name is Tim Schmoyer. Welcome to Video Creators here. We are all about helping you grow your YouTube audience so you can reach more people, make more money, grow your channel, ultimately so that you can change their lives with the message that you're spreading. And it's really hard to do that if the government is holding you back. <laughs> if you remember back to the end of 2019, there was a lot of drama and hype going on about what Kappa was gonna mean for us as creators. And it was kind of hard, honestly, to separate the hype and the people who are really selling how bad this was gonna be, typically for personal gain, versus the people who are like, ah, it's, let's, let's just be chill here. Like, let's look at the track record. And I was felt, I was clearly in that camp. And I wanna be clear that now that we're about two months into this, that we still, it's still really early to see exactly what's going to happen. I don't yet know if Kappa has fully been rolled out yet on this platform. I don't know what parts of it are currently being enforced and what parts aren't being enforced as strongly. So there's still a lot more that could unfold and come in the coming months. But as of right now, where we're at is like, the sky didn't fall and we're kind of still here. <laughs> now the data that I want to cover here comes from about 40 million YouTube channels and encompasses around 6 billion subscribers and around two and a half trillion views here on the platform. So it's a pretty decent sample size thanks to my friends over at Social Blade. The summary is that if your channel is not labeled as made for kids, then you're, from all the data suggests that there was little to no change whatsoever made on your channel. Like channels like mine, nothing was impacted significantly in any way. And it also seems that channels that were kind of in that gray area, like it's not made for kids, but we have a lot of kids watching those types of channels where they look like those channels have been more safe than we thought that they might have been. The main impact we saw happened on channels that were very clearly made for kids for under 13 years old, like no one's arguing or fighting about that. Everyone looks at that. You're like, that's a nursery mind and an ABC phonics video that is very repetitious. That is clearly for a three year old, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Now on the surface, it doesn't look like much change over the past two months for these made for kids channels when you lump all the data together. But when you start separating them into channels with a million plus subscribers versus channels with less than a million subscribers, then you start to see a pretty significant difference. From what we can tell, channels with a million subscribers are more, or more accurately, channels that are just more well-established on the platform overall, they saw either an increase, very little increase in views, or no dip at all. However, channels that are not as established on the platform in the kid niche, those channels saw somewhere around 12 to 13% decrease in views. Now, these numbers do change based on what date range you're looking at and which data you're comparing to what, but overall, it seems like the established channels are still doing fine, and the ones that weren't as established are doing poor. And so that looks like what happened is YouTube is favoring the big guys and they're squashing the little guys. But I don't know if that's actually happening and I'm going to get into some speculation here a little bit, but I think there's maybe a couple of different things happening. One is that the new search and discovery system that YouTube is developing for kids is very new and it will get better over time. And I think YouTube decided to favor the content that it already knew was safe versus the majority of the content that they suspect was probably fine, but weren't as confident over. Over time, I think that we'll see that those smaller channels will start to come back as YouTube's search and discovery system for the kids app actually gets better. A second thing that might be happening here is that according to data from videoamigo.com that also tracks a lot of the data for these channels, they showed that these, these smaller channels as January 1st was coming nearer, they actually slowed down with how many videos they were that they were published. Whereas the big channels with a million plus actually ramped up production and they started posting more videos and gaining more momentum for their channels 
heading into the, the, the switchover for when COPPA took effect on January 1st. So it might have been that those smaller channels kind of fell into the hype a bit more and got a little more nervous and like it's not worth posting and YouTube's gonna take this away and so they got discouraged. In terms of how revenue has been impacted, this part is getting a little bit even more speculative because YouTube's API doesn't report those numbers publicly to people so we don't know exactly what's going on there. But we have heard reports from channels that are made from kids. Some of them saying that their channel's revenue just tanked, that, that it just took a nosedive and has yet to really return. But we've also heard reports some some made for kids channel are like, ah, oh, it's just kind of about the same or maybe even grew a little bit. Well, I do appreciate hearing people's stories and hearing what their experience has been on the platform with a lot of these things. It's hard to, to make a sweeping assumption about 172,000 made for kid channels by just hearing a few people's stories. You know, there was this thing called the vocal minority. And so I'm not downplaying anyone's stories, but it's just hard to say for certainty that because we've heard some negative stories that that must therefore be the case for everyone in the group. And remember that the kids space on YouTube is very lucrative for the company as a whole. So if you're not getting paid as much as it used to be, that means YouTube also is not getting paid as much as they used to. And they are very motivated to make sure that this grows, revenue comes in. And so we're just kind of in like this, no pun intended, infancy stage right now of YouTube's new discovery systems for kids as it continues to mature and grow and they continue to learn and tweak them over time. I have full confidence that we are gonna come right back to where we were, if not even better sometime in the future. If you have a YouTube channel that's designated as made for kids, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below what your experience has been like so far. Also share down there what your expectation for Kappa was versus how that compared to what actually is happening now in these first two months on your channel. So I'm looking forward to reading everything you guys have to say, interacting with you guys, learning from you. Thank you each of you for being a part of this amazing community here at Video Creators and I will see you guys again in the next video. See you then, bye. <laughs>